Hey, welcome back. This is Ramki Ramakrishnan and you are now in section 4, module 2. In this section, we are going to learn the three simple rules that are considered the cornerstone of the Elliott wave principle. It is said that these rules are unbreakable, but you will see later on that we will allow for some exceptions. All the rules are equally important. So let's get started. The first rule deals with wave 2. In a five wave sequence, wave 2 can never exceed the starting point of wave 1. This rule is important because many beginners make mistakes while placing the zero at the significant low, especially when there are two lows next to each other. Let us consider an example. This daily chart of the S&P 500 index is clearly a huge bull cycle and hence you will be looking for a five wave pattern from the lows. If we label the waves as shown here then it is incorrect. Although each of the three key lows are significant in their own degree if we start the five wave count of the medium term at 1820 and then say wave 2 happened at a lower low of 1812 or 1810 then that will violate the first rule we stated earlier the same goes for choosing 1812 as a low because wave 2 will then be at 1810 a lower level than the point 0 even if only by 2 points so you must always remember to start from a significant low The same is the case for a five wave movement that starts at the top. Say you have just completed a bull cycle and the correction has come to the downside. After a dip, you get a new rally that goes above the supposed top of the bull cycle. How will you deal with the wave count then? Take a look at this chart of crude oil. If we place wave 2 as shown, then the wave count is wrong. because wave 2 will have traded above the starting point of wave 1 the point 0 i hope you have understood rule number 1 well so let us move on to consider the second rule that deals with wave 3 this rule states that wave 3 can never be the shortest impulse wave in a five wave cycle remember every wave in the direction of the trend whether it is an uptrend or a downtrend is made up of five sub waves three of these five waves are in the direction of the trend and are known as impulse waves the rule says that the third wave the wave that happens in the middle can never be smaller than both wave 1 and wave 5 let us consider three scenarios the first scenario is wave 3 is the longest of the three impulse waves that is usually what happens and is perfectly fine Now, scenario number 2. Wave 3 can be smaller than wave 1, but in this case, wave 5 will be smaller still than wave 3. This is fine. But if you observe wave 5 is becoming longer than wave 3, then something is wrong with the count. We are probably still in wave 3. The third scenario is where we start off with a small wave 1 and get a wave 3 which is longer than wave 1. After that, wave 5 becomes extended and becomes bigger than both wave 1 and 3 this is also fine because wave 3 is still bigger than wave 1 so we have covered three scenarios where wave 3 is in one case smaller than both the other waves which is not allowed the other two scenarios is where wave 3 is smaller than either wave 1 or smaller than wave 5 that is perfectly fine what we don't want to see is for wave 3 to be smaller than both of them let us look at some real world charts now see if you can label this hourly chart of dollar yen did you label the waves as shown here then it is incorrect observe that wave 3 was less than 100% of wave 1 meaning it is shorter than wave 1 and even without measuring we can see that wave 5 is longer than both the other waves that makes wave 3 the shortest impulse wave which is not allowed by the rules the correct way to label the waves is shown here having a correct wave count is important when you're trading 
because subsequent waves will tend to have relationships with the prior waves. Our estimates of the size of moves to come will be wrong if we incorrectly label prior waves. For example, in this chart, the first support on the way down was the prior wave 4 level. Knowing that would have helped you in your trading decisions at the time. But if you had put the wave 4 elsewhere, you would not know where the first support would lie. There is another important practical use to the rule about wave 3 not being the shortest impulse wave. Elliot has observed that in a 5 wave sequence, there is a tendency for one of the three impulse waves to be extended, which means it is longer than the average length. The rule we have just discussed will help you spot a potential third wave extension as it is happening. Imagine you had a wave 1 of normal proportion, that is, all its minor waves were of normal length. We will talk about what is the normal length later on, but just now let us say that the formation of wave 1 did not have any wave inside it that was unusually long. Then, imagine we see a wave 3 that is shorter than wave 1, and then a dip that is supposedly wave 4. We should now be on high alert for an extension in wave 3 because what we just now saw cannot be the complete wave 3 unless wave 5 is going to be shorter still. On the other hand, if we commence a strong rally higher, it could imply that what we originally thought was the wave 3 is merely the first minor wave inside a much larger extending third wave. If you are alert, a great deal of money can be made from such a turn of events. We now move on to the final rule that concerns wave 4. This rule states that in a 5 wave sequence, wave 4 can never enter the region of wave 1 except in a diagonal triangle. If you follow this rule diligently, you will often save yourself a ton of money. But first, let us see some examples. In this chart of BHEL, we see that wave 4 has come below the top of wave 1. Clearly, we have labeled this chart incorrectly. Imagine you had originally thought that the bear move from the top had finished at the point mark 3. And so you label the three waves up as 1, 2 and 3. Then you should not have seen wave 4 dip below the top of wave 1. The moment that happened, you will revise your wave counts and prepare to exit your long position on the next recovery because these three waves are more likely to be a correction implying continuation of the downtrend. Indeed, many traders often place the stop loss orders on long positions just below the top of wave 1 to protect themselves from a precipitous drop. Before we wrap up this section, let us look at an example of where an overlap is allowed. In this chart of BHEL, we see that wave 5 has assumed the shape of an expanding diagonal triangle. We also see that subwave 4 has traded below the top of subwave 1. Whereas we would normally have assumed that the stock will go down directly, knowing that we are in a bull cycle helped us anticipate one more recovery as subwave 5. A sound understanding of these rules and how to use the rules to your advantage makes all the difference when it comes to trading in the real world. To sum up this section, we have examined three important rules that govern Elliott Wave Principle. You have learned not just the rules, but also what these rules mean to a trader. You now know how to apply those rules to your advantage. Remember, the smart trader applies his or her knowledge of the rules and guidelines to gain an edge that most others don't have. We have looked at the rules in this section. I will be covering the guidelines in detail as we deal with each stage of the progression. Congratulations! You have made great progress and what lies ahead is not only interesting but it will potentially transform your trading career.